Hello and welcome to the Kingpin Crime YouTube channel. Today we'll be looking at an organisation run by three of the most feared brothers in Britain, a notorious family linked to 25 murders during a 30 year reign of terror. They were known as the Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate, the Adams Family Crime Organisation or the A-Team. Firstly we will focus on the crimes committed and the key moments for the gang, then the individuals involved to highlight their personal underworld involvement. Terry Adams, along with Tommy Adams and Patrick Adams, were born to Irish parents, along with eight other siblings who grew up in Barnsbury, Islington. During the 1980s, the brothers formed the syndicate with Terry as the leader, Tommy as the financier and Patrick the enforcer. The organisation was based in Clerkenwell, while Terry Adams still lived in Barnsbury. The gang later expanded to include some of the other members of the Adams family and close childhood friends. Speculated to be heavily involved in drug trafficking, hijacking of gold bullion shipments and security fraud to name a few, in addition to developing alleged connections to corrupt metropolitan police officers. It is also suspected that they may even have had a British Conservative MP in their pocket. Rival gang members seem to be the main opposition for the gang however, with one altercation leading to the shooting of Mad Frankie Frazier of the Richardson Gang in July 1991. The shooting was said to have been ordered by the Adams family, though Fraser himself said he had been targeted by rogue police officers. The family is believed to have connections with various crime organisations, notably South American drug cartels. Tommy Adams was imprisoned for money laundering and a drugs plot that was described as not having been sanctioned by his brothers. During an 18 month bugging operation by MI5, Terry Adams was recorded speaking about his brother bluntly, suggesting that in 1998, meetings between them were kept to a minimum. The failure of police to secure convictions against them had led to belief that they had undermined the justice system to become untouchables. Police, Crown Prosecution Service staff and jurors were reportedly bribed and intimidated leading to not guilty verdicts against the gang members. Tommy Adams gained high profile public attention during a trial in 2004 when he was described as having attended a meeting in 2002 at the request of the former football international Kenny Dalgleish. Dalgleish was a major shareholder in Wimslow based sports agency Proactive, a leading sports management firm headed up by local businessman Paul Stretford. Dalgleish was reported to have hired Adams during a protracted deal to secure Proactive's exclusive management rights to Manchester United and England footballer Wayne Rooney, when another company claimed to represent Rooney. In February 2010, a 38-year-old man claiming to be Terry Adams' nephew was convicted in a case known as the Jigsaw Murder. The trial revealed that the man, Stephen Marshall, had disposed of four bodies for the Adamses and was sentenced to at least 36 years in prison. In 2014, Tommy Adams and 13 other people believed to be affiliated with the Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate were arrested in a police operation codenamed Octopod. Designer watches, six shotguns and large sums of money were found in addresses across the city. The arrests were linked to conspiracy to assault, money laundering, fraud and revenue offences. The Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate was alleged to be one of the most powerful organisations in the United Kingdom. Media reports have credited them with a collective wealth of up to £200 million. The BBC has asserted that their influence decreased from 2000 onwards, with elite information from police officers stating that the family had been credited with acts that they simply did not carry out. However, the Metropolitan Police took the alleged crimes of the Adams family sufficiently seriously to involve a Crown Prosecution Service-led team of detectives and MI5 in order to crack the Adams' mafia-like cartel. Terry Adams, born the 18th of October 1954 in London, described as having more recently adopted a more genteel persona by enclosing expensive fabrics and indulging in his love of art and antiques to appear legitimate. His downfall came with the assistance of MI5 and the Inland Revenue. MI5, in a unique interdepartment collaboration, the first of its kind after the Cold War had ended, played a leading part in the electronic war against organised crime and turned its sights on the Adams Cartel. Setting up a secret squad to dismantle the organisation, they occupied an anonymous Hertfordshire address on the busy Hoddesdon commuter belt into London to intercept the gang's communications. Some of the recordings made suggest that Terry Adams had retired from frontline involvement in crime in 1990. Police sources believe Adams knew he was being monitored, so was allegedly caught on tape in 1998 telling his advisor, Solly Nahum, that he did not want to be involved with a particular legal deal which would affect his legitimate business. This was in order to use the recordings in his defence. The Inland Revenue was suspicious enough to ask Adams to explain how he had amassed his personal fortune. 
Adams invented a range of unlikely occupations, including jeweller and public relations executive. Transcripts of the surveillance and investigations into several front companies Adams set up proved he was lying. He was arrested in April 2003 when detectives found art and antiques valued at £500,000, cash of £59,000 and jewellery worth more than £40,000 in his home. On 9th of March 2007, at the hearing at the Old Bailey, Andrew Mitchell summed up the prosecutor's case in saying it is suggested that Terry Adams was one of the most feared and revered organised criminals. He comes with a pedigree as one of the family whose name had a currency all of its own. He admitted a single specimen money laundering charge on 7th of February 2007 and was jailed for seven years, being released on 24th of June 2010 and then recalled to prison in August 2011 for breaching his licence. Also on 21st of May 2007, he was ordered to file reports of his income for the next 10 years. In August 2011, he appeared before City of London Magistrates Court charged with eight breaches of his financial reporting order. In March 2017, Adams lost his appeal against an order to pay £700,000 under the Proceeds of Crime Act. In November 2017, a district judge sitting in Western Supermare ordered Terry Adams to pay the remaining amount within 30 days or return to prison. In December 2017, Adams repaid the entire confiscation order of around £725,000 despite his repeated claims of poverty. In February 2019, media reports suggest that Terry Adams and his wife were living in housing association flat. Later that month, however, he paid back an additional £50,000 to Westminster Magistrates Court. Due to paying his debts, he is still a free man, though there has been rumours further prosecutions may be imminent. Tommy Adams, born in 1958 in London, was allegedly financier for his brothers Terry and Patrick. A married father of four, he still has a home near the family's traditional Islington base, but was understood to be living in Spain before he was jailed in 2017. Tommy Adams was charged with the involvement in the handling of stolen Brinks Mark Gold bullion, but in 1985 was cleared of involvement during a high-profile Old Bailey trial with co-defendant Kenneth Noy. Tommy Adams is suspected of establishing connections to other international criminal organisations, including numerous Yardie gangs, as well as gaining an £800 million credit line from Colombian drug cartels. In 1998, Adams was convicted of masterminding an 8 million hashish smuggling operation into Britain and was jailed for seven years. At trial, he was also ordered to pay an unprecedented £6 million criminal assets embargo, or face an additional five years imprisonment. On appeal, the criminal assets embargo was later reduced to £1 million, largely due to the CPS not having sufficient material evidence, bank accounts and traceable assets to verify Adams' criminal wealth. Adams' wife, Andrula, paid its £1 million criminal assets embargo in cash just two days before the Crown Prosecution Service deadline. Tommy was further convicted of money laundering and sentenced to seven years in prison in 2017 after a number of significant criminal cash seizures were linked to him. Patsy Adams, born 2nd of February 1956 in London, gained an early reputation in London's underworld by using high-speed motorcycles in gangland murders and was suspected in at least 25 organised crime-related deaths over a three-year period. He was sentenced to seven years in prison in the 1970s for armed robbery. Patrick, sometimes known as Patsy, has participated in individual criminal activities, most notably in a 1991 murder attempt on Frankie Fraser. According to one account, he assaulted Fraser's son David Fraser with a knife, cutting off part of his ear during a drug deal. The defendant stated in 2001 that he was living in exile in Spain in a walled villa bristling with security cameras. Patrick Adams and his wife were then wanted in connection with an attempted murder in Clerkenwell, London on the 27th of December 2013. Later arrested in Amsterdam on the 7th of August 2015, Adams admitted shooting Paul Tiernan but he was cleared of attempted murder after the victim refused to cooperate with police. Adams admitted to causing grievous bodily harm with intent at Woolwich Crown Court and was sentenced to nine years in 2016. Police searched Adams' flat in the days after the shooting and found a handwritten note from Mr Tiernan, which said I ain't no grass and urged his former friend to face me. In an interview in 2020, Paul Tiernan stated that Adams was released from prison earlier in the year. That concludes our video on the Adams Family Crime Syndicate. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section below.